Time is 7.33 on the 29th of April. One week, one day from Milton Keynes Marathon. Uh, doing my last long training run today with 14 miles. Uh, the plan is, uh, maybe 15 miles, the plan is uh, 9.45 for the first mile, 8.45 for the second mile, and 7.45, 12 miles, 11, 11 or 12 miles straight, and then one mile cool down. Bit of rain, come over to Rother Valley Country Park, nice and flat. Um, and yeah, I'm four weeks post skin graft surgery, so uh, I don't want to push things too much. But I feel like I need to know that I can bash out 14 decent miles uh, if I'm going to run a full marathon next weekend off the back of a couple of weeks of training. So here goes. Just approaching the end of my warm up. As you always do, set up a little bit faster than wanted. Uh, first mile was about 8.45. Uh, second mile I decided to go 30 seconds quicker, about 8.15. Um, heart rates only kind of reached about 140. Uh, so still a little bit of room uh, to increase the pace slightly. I'm probably going to increase the pace to 7.45 from the next mile now. I'm going to stick with 7.45. Uh, there we go. 8.13 for the second mile. So maybe I've not lost as much fitness as I thought I had, which is great. Uh, I've lost a bit of weight as well. So. Alright, here we go. Just go up to about 7.45s now. Stick with that. So that's another 2.9 mile loop, almost done. Uh, first of my faster miles was 7.46, and the second one was 7.43. So things are going all right on pace. Heart rate seems to be steady at around 148, 150. That kind of thing, so not too strenuous. Seems to be going a bit fast on this one. Slow down a bit. Um, I think I'll probably have my gel that I brought with me. There we go. So that one ended up being 7.36. So a bit fast, so I'll slow down a bit on the next one. Uh, I'll have a gel in about a mile or so. Okay, lovely day for it. Rain stopped, which I'm happy about. So, yeah, just about keeping the cadence, really. Uh, that's one thing that you don't get used to on the treadmill. The treadmill kind of does the cadence for you. So, yeah, just keeping the legs turning over. There we go. So I'm exactly seven and a half miles through today's 15 mile run. So the halfway point seems like a, a good point to have the one gel that I've brought for today's run. With it only being sort of half mile, just over half mile, then I'm not, you know, taking on that many calories throughout the run. So I'm trying a new one today, which is a high five. Um, raspberry plus uh, gel which is quite liquidy apparently um, compared to the SIS gels that I'm used to that are a bit gloopy um, so yeah the plus means that it's got caffeine in it but the caffeine is a lot less than in an SIS gel as well whereas an SIS gel has 
175 milligrams of caffeine. These are just 30 milligrams, which I think might be good sort of in the latter stages of the race uh, of a marathon. So I wanted to try one today. So I'll let you know how that goes. So yeah, just coming up to the eight mile point. Uh, every time I get the camera out, it seems like I run that mile a bit too fast. I feel like I need a bit of pace in the bank before I can talk. So I'm going a bit fast here, but I think it'll average out to about 7.45 miles. All right, so coming up to 11 miles, which means I've done nine miles at this 7.45 pace. The gel was good, not as substantial as an SIS gel. It's only got half the calories and less than half the caffeine, but really easy to sort of digest and swallow. So I think it'll be great for the latter stages of a marathon or maybe the midpoint of a half marathon. Um, so just about one more uh, of these 2.9 mile laps at pace and then a cool down. Things are going well. So yeah, this is a great confidence boost to going into next week. So my Garmin's just about to tick over to 14 total miles and 12 miles complete at the 7.45 pace, which is brilliant. Loads of positives to take away from today's run. Um, and a few things to sort of bear in mind for the next week leading up to the marathon. My left hamstring's definitely tighter. It's probably been compensating for the right leg that's had the skin graft surgery. So, a lot of foam rolling on the left hand side. Uh, is what's going to be needed. There we go. 7.45 exactly for the last mile. Oh no, 7.43. Even better. Um, so, yeah, I just need to roll that out. It's one point on my foot. Um, but I'll probably need to put some Vaseline on before the marathon. But yeah, just a cool down to go now. So, I'll see you back at the car. Bye for now about the valley. So that's 15 miles done, actually 15.15 miles. Um, decided to stop the clock at exactly two hours, um, which was uh, pretty much back at the car. Just spending a bit of time now just stretching out my hamstring because that felt quite tight uh, in the last few miles while my muscles are still warm. Then breakfast time. So back in the car now, 15.15 miles done in two hours. Um, Garmin's, I think Garmin's telling me that it was um, an average pace of 7.54 per mile. Um, that my average heart rate was 149 beats per minute, which is exactly what I wanted uh, under 150 beats per minute uh, so I'm not straining myself too much post-surgery until I've really fully recovered I'm only three weeks post-surgery now when the marathon comes around I'll only be about a month four weeks post-surgery so um, max heart rate went up to 165 uh, there were you know a couple of hilly bits or I was trying to catch the pace a little bit at the end um, and apparently I've burnt uh, 1638 calories so it's definitely time to eat. Uh, just before I do eat, there's a few things that I was trialing um, for the first time today. Uh, one of which was these uh, Injinji uh, ultra thin, uh, ultra lightweight socks, the, the no-show style. So they've got this lip at the back to stop you getting blisters on the back of your ankle, uh, but they're very quite low down. Uh, some people prefer like a crew a longer sock but uh, because I have to wear the, um, the calf sleeves um, uh, I, I decided to go for these um, 
so yeah they worked out okay they've got toes because uh, a lot of the time I get um, blisters on on the sides of my toes uh, they worked out okay the left foot on inspection uh, looks absolutely immaculate no problem whatsoever the right foot however I had a blister from the treadmill on this toe uh, like on my middle toe from earlier in the week um, that's obviously still there uh, but then on the toe next to it I've, um, I've got a blister today uh, where it's been rubbing so uh, nothing more than I would normally get with my normal socks so I would say that um, you know they've performed great for the first time around 15 miles um, they're very thin uh, but the reason I went for the, the ultra thin ones rather than a thicker design was because the uh, the Nike RN Distance 2 shoes that I'll be running uh, the full marathon next week in um, are like the, the, the Nike 3 um, Nike 3 system so they're meant to sort of stim uh, simulate your uh, a more natural um, running style uh, but these are um, these have got their own sort of inner sock liner um, which is quite tight so I didn't want thick socks um, with these um, but maybe that's why uh, I did feel a little bit um, a rubbing on the on the ball of my right foot maybe I need to tighten this up a little bit uh, a bit tighter than I would do with with a thicker sock in there um, but yeah the, these are great shoes um, I did Blackpool half in these um, and they feel just really light really they don't seem to affect your running gait uh, even when your legs get tired uh, they're probably I think they're about 250 grams in this size in a UK size 9 so a US size 10 um, which is light uh, if you come by that so some of the shoes that I, I kind of put a lot of mileage onto like the um, Adidas uh, boost supernova boosts uh, they I think they weigh almost 100 grams at least 320 grams so like 70 to 100 grams uh, more than these per shoe so yeah these are great and these socks uh, the Injinji uh, no-show thin socks seem to uh, work well together with that uh, so I think I think I will stick with that for the marathon another thing that was new today um, was that I normally wear these uh, Kalenji um, calf supports from Decathlon uh, you basically they come in a small medium large I have uh, the smalls and the mediums depending on how much compression I want um, but today I was um, trialing running in my um, custom made um, calf support so this is where I had the the skin graft uh, the, gra the donor site was up up my thigh but it was grafted over a burn which is in this area uh, which I'll show you later but um, yeah this basically what they did was measure my uh, calf at three um, centimeter intervals and uh, then they've sewn it um, the sewing ladies and the NHS uh, National Health Service have, have sewn this and purpose made it for me it's got elastic at the bottom and at the top it's got like uh, rubber strips to stop it falling down now this was brilliant it's made of lycra so there's no rubbing I didn't feel any rubbing over my burn graft site um, it didn't move at all which is what uh, what I like about the Kalenji ones is that they, they just don't move um, and that was perfect so I know that I can run in that no issues um, that's that and then the final thing I was, I was trialing was I've got this little carry more um, pouch um, which uh, I have used once before for, for a longer race and I didn't really like uh, I think I packed it too full um, but this I just used today because it's really soft material I just used it to carry uh, my Garmin, Garmin um, Verb XC um, which is what I'm recording this video on um, which seemed good seemed good to be able to just um, have one thing in this uh, zip it back and forth sort of tied it round so that it doesn't move doesn't, it doesn't get any looser as it goes on um, 
so that's that worked well too. And then all my uh, my gels on the day and my gel today, uh, I've just put in the back pocket of my sh my shorts, um, and that's uh, kind of what I did uh, with my iPhone today. I don't know whether I'll carry my iPhone on the race day. It'll depend if I can fit enough gels in my back pocket. So yeah, right, breakfast. It's now just about 10 o'clock um, and after my long run uh, I'm going to be having uh, this for breakfast which is overnight oats. Um, so I prepared this last night. It's uh, 125 grams of uh, porridge oats, rolled oats um, with 85 grams of peanut butter um, and 350 ml of almond milk uh, just cheap stuff um, I buy the basics uh, Tesco um, peanut butter I also buy uh, Aldi's almond milk and like the basic Tesco or co-op porridge oats uh, to keep the price down uh, I mean, I have this eight times in a week, so once every morning, and then twice on race day, usually, uh, on run it, long run day, usually. Today I woke up, and I was quite full from last night, because we got back late um, from a trip over towards Liverpool. Um, and I ha uh, So I, I woke up uh, this morning, and about half past six, I had um, two uh, granola bars, pretty much the same as the Nature Valley, uh, oats and honey, um, granola bars but uh, the, the Aldi version cheaper um, and I had some peanut butter on there um, and a banana and an, an SIS electrolyte uh, effervescent tablet in water uh, and a cup of tea so I had all that at half past six um, still felt fairly light um, which was good um, following that uh, that so I could still run and then now I'm having this um, so yeah, that's breakfast, so it's time to tuck it.